reckon it's time. Yeah, it's so time to get cracking. So, so welcome everyone. I apologise for my slightly husky voice. It's day two of conference and I already can't speak. Um, but welcome to Sports Biz Sunday in the whole. A talk about what happens when you mix data with sport. So who are we first off? Uh, other than obviously you can see us in the flesh at the, s at the front here. Uh, we are three individuals that got together uh, in January this year uh, to talk and, and promote everything to do with sports and data. And we created the community that is Sports Biz Sunday. So it's a, a Twitter community and we're here to explore the TARDIS of uh, <laughs> the TARDIS of sports and data. So James Smith is the ginger one um, and the Chelsea fan. James works at Ernst & Young as a data analytics manager. But he's a lifelong Chelsea fan. Um, so sorry, um, what you will realize is Spence is an Arsenal fan, James is a Chelsea fan. So the two don't mix, um, but we do go on pretty well. Uh, James also runs, just to say, his own sports data company called Sports Cord. Um, so while we're checking out some of the visualizations he does using sports diagrams with Sports Cord data. Thank you, Simon. I will now introduce Simon. Uh, I'm sure many of you know him already. Um, just walking around with him over the last couple of days, he seems to be a bit of a celebrity in these parts. So it's very difficult when you walk in the mile length of, of this conference hall not to get stopped. Uh, but Simon is a proud Tableau ambassador. He is a Tableau desktop certified person as well. Uh, and he, he loves all kinds of sports. He, he participates in golf, badminton and tennis and watches, but doesn't participate in Formula One. And here's Spencer, our friend from Cincinnati. So there's a couple of people from the UK and Spencer over here. He's an Arsenal fan, uh, a recent proud father, which is delightful. <laughs> So he's been given two days off uh, to come and, and present this with us. So uh, we're delighted to have him here. And it's actually the first time that we've met as well. Uh, the two of us have met Spencer, having spoken across Twitter for, for quite a long time now. So, uh. so just before we start, there is going to be a quick game during today's session. So any time you see an American football image or a data viz about NFL, if you either stand up or put your hand up, the first couple of people every time we do it will get a Sports Biz Sunday <laughs> branded American football. Um, so keep your eyes out and Spencer will try his best um, to not lob it in your eyes. So um, just keep an eye out when he um, rockets one at you. Uh, and that is the New Orleans Saints. So we did try and keep it local <laughs> and to appease the ones that um, are supporting the local teams. So how did the three of us find sport and find each other? That was quick. Yeah, it was. Well done, guys. <laughs> so we all, we all love sports. We all love Tableau. <laughs> People just throw them out. Will you? you have to wait until you see a, uh, a picture of an American football or something American football themed. You, you can't just put your hands up. Um, we were inspired by the Makeover Monday community, which I'm sure many of you know as well. I think they had their thing uh, on Monday. Uh, and that's all about a big community, helping people learn, getting people together. And so we were suitably inspired to create our own community uh, around sport. Uh, this all kicked off in January this year. Uh, it was born along with Simon's young son. So I'm the only member that doesn't have a son and don't plan to have a son anytime soon. But uh, yeah, two proud dads either side of me. Sorry, click is just taking time. Oh. <laughs> so. What we want to do is we want to explore what happens when you mix the intensity of sports with the endless possibilities of data. I think maybe these things are a slight distraction. Yeah. <laughs> and what happens when you mix the passion of people? Well, when you do all of that, you get creativity. So um, for those of you that aren't aware, this is Jack Russell. He's an ex-England cricketer who now spends his time on the boundary rope actually painting <laughs> cricket matches um, during his spare time. So he's turned from a professional sportsman into a data artist, well, not a data artist, but an actual artist using watercolours. But you also get recognised. So in the last year alone, Tableau have done two sports initiatives. So we've had Analyze the Game, um, and we've also had the Summer of Sports. 
So if you do want to get recognised, sports data is a really good opportunity to be on Tableau's radar, publish something on Tableau Public, and get your name out there and get it recognised. So this is a great opportunity for everyone to be able to do that. So why sports? Sports is a global phenomenon. Everyone here, I think, hopefully is interested in sports, given that you saw the, the name of our talk. Uh, and I think there's a sport out there for everyone. So we've got cricket in India, ice hockey for the Canadians, got American football <laughs> here in the US. We've got proper football in the rest of the world. Uh, and everyone, I'm sure here, has played a bit of sport at some point in their life. So it's a great way of, of being competitive, doing something fun, doing something exciting. And there's also a world of data that backs up sports. So you've got uh, a ton of data around in all kinds of sports. Uh, and that's becoming even more frequent now. You see pre-season in a lot of uh, sports out there. You've got people wearing their vests. They're being tracked. So you've got a whole world of data. Uh, and there's loads of people that are really interested in the combination of where sports and stats meet each other. So you've got whole programs that discuss stats and sports. And any um, Boston Red Sox fans in the room? Cool. So just a little nod to you all there for Fenway Park. So we're going to go through some of the, uh, the finest that we've, uh, we've seen out there and, and put together. Uh, so this is our friend Spencer, one of his. Uh, and I think it was one of the first ones actually that made use of the Viz and Tooltip feature. So in this one, Spencer's taken a huge amount of data. Uh, and you're looking at, at uh, the bigger picture. But also, you can drill down and have a look at some of the interesting stuff that uh, is a lot finer as well. So in today's talk, we're going to um, showcase a lot of community visits. So hopefully some of these, the slides will be available afterwards. So if you do want to find out more, just go on the Tableau Public and you can actually open the visits up, download it and see how it's been done. Um, but here, Ben Davis looked at the Masters Golf and actually looked at a statistical analysis of how people's form at the Masters compared to their form prior to the event. Um, and I love the use of reference bands that he's done to identify when players are performing better at the Masters than expected or worse than the Masters than expected. And there's some great blog posts by Klaus Schultz about how to do those reference bands. Um, so some great tips out there to be able to replicate that for yourself. Here's another American football one. <laughs> uh, this one here is by Sean Levin. I don't know whether he is here today. I would say put your hand up, but... Um, but we, what we really love here is the way that the stadiums and the, the shapes of the stadiums are, are really awesome. Uh, and I would love to do something like this on the, on the Premier League where you've got all that information, but the, the centerpiece really is the stadiums and the outlines, and it becomes instantly recognizable to the, to the fans of these various teams. Uh, so I don't know whether, if, if Sean is here today, whether he could explain exactly at a later point how he did the, uh, the pictures, but, uh, or whether he downloaded them somewhere. But actually bringing in those kind of... Uh, infographics or those pieces of art into your work makes uh, the whole kind of world of data a lot more entertaining to look at. And here James Smith as part of his IMV year of feeder entry looked at the derby days of English football um, and the reason we chose this one is we love the little logos that he's done in terms of being able to show half and half to show the teams that are participating in the matches and that kind of visual intrigue about getting people hooked in by something quite creative. And this one, a shout out to Paul. Is he watching by the side? I saw him a bit earlier. He's somewhere around. No, oh, that's not him. Um, and so th this one's all about geographical data. So uh, everyone's got their own, their local team. Uh, Simons was Portsmouth. Spencer is a big fan of the Cincinnati team. Uh, I'm a fan of Chelsea, despite not living. Well, I actually lived 10 minutes from, from the ground last year, but I was originally from a bit further south, and my local team were rubbish. So Chelsea it was. But moving on, moving on beyond geographical data, sports is all about people. Um, and some of the best sports visits that we've seen out there connect people's idols. So they're about the sportsmen and women that we all idolize and we all um, notice and follow every single day of the year. Um, so in this visit, Matt Chambers looked at the iconic flight between Mayweather and McGregor. Um, and this visit on Tableau Public has actually received over three quarters of a million hits. Um, so it's one of Tableau Public's most viewed visits, um, and certainly one of the most iconic of last year. I think this one by Shane actually uh, saw inspiration in that other one. Uh, but what's important here is the, the, the use of color, which we'll look into a bit further a bit later. 
Uh, but he's used the Wimbledon colours uh, to really pull out the, the rivalry between Nadal and Djokovic. And our last one about people. Um, here, Pablo Gomez. So for those of you that don't know Pablo, he's a Tableau public ambassador and a very proud Argentinian. Um, so he visited about Sergio Aguero and his prolific goal scoring record in the Premier League. And one of the best things that Pablo does is embed em images alongside his charts. So they're very much kind of a style of an infographic. And if you check the full viz, it's a massive long form viz, but it looks absolutely awesome. Um, so we just wanted to kind of showcase Pablo in the way that he uses simple color palette. So only two colors, one being the light blue of Man City, um, and then embeds it with images of Sergio Aguero ready to get you hooked in. And he actually made that one for his son. Uh, he, he came up and, and met us at the London Tableau user group and told him, he introduced his son and said, this is, this is the one, this is the one. So uh, it's actually wonderful for bringing families together as well. Uh, it also allows you to do some things that are a bit different, a bit out of, uh, out of ordinary. So Anne Jackson's here uh, has, has taken quite a cool, I think it's like a spider's web almost, bringing the uh, information out. And she's used highlighting in this one uh, to show the important bits of the biz. And then we move on to Kisley Benedict. So unfortunately not NFL, so he can't put your hand up. Um, but Kisley looked at cricket, so Sachin Tendulkar. Um, he recently scored 100 centuries. And the brilliant thing that I love about this, so each individual square in the viz actually represents one of the hundreds that Sachin Tendulkar scored. And if you hover over those squares, um, obviously they make his face, but you also get a viz in tool tip to be able to see what the hundred was who Sachin Ted Hawk was playing at the time. So how he did that, I really don't know, but it's just a really cool way um, of taking Ted Hawk's face, embedding it with data, and making a really creative viz. This one here from uh, Ryan Sleeper. You sometimes look at visualizations like this and you think, how on earth have they done that in Tableau? And I know Neil sitting in the front row, uh, I think we'll, we'll feel about, uh, about yours sometimes as well, but... Uh, He's, uh, he's constructed the stadium here, um, and he's used different colors to show where it's expensive, where it's cheap to sit. So it, I think it's a wonderful use case of using polygons. I think it was one of the first ones to use the, the polygon within Tableau uh, to, to make the stadium. And then moving on, Sam Parsons this year. So this was only from a couple of months ago, but Sam got Viz of the Day um, for doing a Viz about the Rugby Union Premier League in England. Um, and again, some of the way he uses radial dot plots to be able to look at the variants. If you look at that viz in total on Tableau Public, some of the techniques he used to analyze rugby union are absolutely sensational, and they really want to make you dig into the data further. So another great example of using different chart types to really look at sports data very differently to what you would do in a business. This one by Luke is, uh, is one of our favorites. I don't know whether you guys have seen this before, but it's, uh, it's where penalties in, uh, in football, proper football, are taken and saved and scored. So. Uh, this, this one makes me think, when you're looking at some of the Sky Sports or uh, NBC coverage of, uh, of sports, they, they tend to have some pretty dreadful graphics a lot of the time. And imagine if you sat this one down in front of uh, the goalkeepers of, uh, of major football teams uh, and said, this is where they take them, how effective a visualization like this using hexagons would be. And it, it kind of sticks in the memory for them. So when, if they do have a penalty during the game, they can, uh, they can remember that visual and, and dive one way or the other. So next we move on to color. So color is so synonymous with data visualization. Um, if you've ever heard Matt Francis speak, he passionately shares his views about what colors work in data visualizations and what don't. And actually it's exactly the same in the world of cricket, uh, sorry, in the world of sport. So sport is all about color. Um, and that's why the two go so well together. So just to take that to uh, the world of football, um, James supports Chelsea. So Chelsea is all about blue. Um, if you were um, unfortunate enough, James will sing you a song about um, I will not sing you a song. <laughs> blue is the colour, football is our game. Um, but actually for Chelsea, the first thing you think about is that royal blue strip um, at Stamford Bridge playing at home. That's Spencer's love of Arsenal. Uh, you, you kind of surprised us here by not wearing red, but Arsenal playing red, so red is Spencer's colour. Um, uh, it's a shame that Olivier Giroud didn't love red quite as much as Spencer, but... Uh. So for those of you who don't know, Olivier Giroud now plays for, Ars uh, for Chelsea, so he swapped the red of Arsenal uh, for the blue of Chelsea. And Simon's hometown of Portsmouth, uh, while it's not quite as famous as maybe Chelsea or Arsenal, 
uh, is very famous for the blue, white, and red strip, uh, especially around the Portsmouth area, uh, yeah. because they are the only team in England to wear such a combination. Yeah, so the only other team in Britain that wears that combination is Glasgow Rangers, um, but in England we're the only ones that wear blue, white, and red. Um, and if if Charlie Hutchinson does watch this back on um, record, um, he's a Southampton fan, so that one's especially for him. Um, but be warned, colour doesn't always work in sports. So this is a viz of the 1994 World Cup, um, and the Mexico goalkeeper actually had this kit specially made. Um, the idea was, if you wore something that was very colourful and very bright, um, the thought behind it was, more attackers would shoot the ball directly at him, um, so he'd be able to make more saves. It didn't actually work. Um, they went out in the, round, uh, the last 16 of the World Cup, um, but that is an iconic image that Jose Campos has now been kind of associated with all of his career. Another example of uh, a team actually switching their kits at half-time because Sir Alex Ferguson said that uh, the, the players were invisible and they were disappearing into the crowd because they were wearing this grey. Uh, so they were 3-0 down at half-time and they changed kits at half-time uh, and went on to lose 3-1. So it worked. They, they won the second half, but not worked well enough. It's fair to say not many teams wear grey anymore, so um, that experiment failed miserably. So now we just wanted to share with you some data visits um, that were about colour. So here Jeff Plattner looks at the colours associated with each American football team and looks at the two colours to look at the win-loss ratios um, and uses a joy plot looking at a negative and a positive value um, to look at how those teams perform. This one here from Simon uh, was actually nominated for the long list for the uh, Information is Beautiful Awards as well. And it uh, looks at the importance of colour by uh, actually dissecting them and putting the team strips individually across the Premier League with a few stats behind them. And uh, it works really well. It's, I think it was inspired by one of Neil Richards' ones again. Yeah, so Neil, thank you for that because it came from. So all that is, just for those of you that want to know, is a basic scatter plot using squares and triangles and then colouring the squares and triangles by the colour of the shirts. So actually that's not an image, that's just made up using a particular tableau chart, um, which is a scatter plot. And then lastly for colour, um, I think this is a fairly iconic fizz um, from this year, um, but Jacob actually looked at the colours of Major League Baseball um, and looked at the hotspots of how teams went on over the years. Um, if you wanted to download one viz on Tableau Public, do it on this one because some of the table calculations will absolutely blow your mind. Um, but how he's done it is absolutely incredible. Um, so it's one of our most iconic visits about sports and one of our personal favourites from the last year or so. So when we started putting these slides together, we realised that actually you could, you could see data viz on a lot of teams' kits. So you can see Spain there on the left and then a couple of German kits and a wonderful hairstyle. And that made us think of Klaus Schultz's um, Iron Viz winning um, Viz from Europe. And the reason we thought of that is the um, triangles on Spain's home kit actually are very similar to the trapeze uh, maps that Klaus did to be able to depict the European um, Big Mac index. But given uh, where we are, we, we know that uh, friends don't let friends do pie charts, so we would advise not copying this one by Jorge Campos on the right. So now we get to what sports this Sunday is. So we're hosted on Data.World. So Data.World, I've got a stand today, um, but we wanted to say a thank out to them um, because they are allowing us to host all the data and we have a discussion forum on there as well. So do check out our site on Data.World and you can see all the visits that have been done and all the data that we've shared over the last year or so. Uh, what we originally started off doing was actually trying to find uh, visits out there that were related to sport and just sharing them just so that people were aware of them and trying to raise the profile of the great sports visualizations that are out there, like this one by uh, Filippo on Muhammad Ali. And also this great network diagram from Yvette Kovacs um, that looked at the uh, one meter springboard in the World Ch Diving Championships and the network shows the progression over time of how, play how divers change position. Um, over the various rounds of the competition. And we also host a monthly DataViz challenge. So we started doing this in February of this year. So every month we publish a data set about a particular sport. We try and tie it in with when the sport, a big event in our sport is happening. And we publish a data set 
and we ask all of you guys to be able to actually create a viz and we help showcase your vizzes um, going on the data.world and we're absolutely blown away by the quality of the entries that we've had. So this one by Michael McWinsky um, looked at the Winter Olympics in terms of the medals of the Winter Olympics, so the golds, the silvers and the bronzes. And he did it via a radial chart, um, a small multiple radial chart. So we, we try and time our challenges with uh, relevant sporting events in the world. Uh, so March will start the Formula One season and our second day to this challenge. And this one by David Hoskins uh, takes every single race over time. So it was a huge data set. Uh, and it looks at the, the periods of dominance of the different uh, drivers. So you see one man with Fanjo there at the top in that light blue. And April saw the green jacket um, contested for Augusta. Thanks, James. And Paul McHale did this great small multiple viz looking at the winners and how those winners actually scored over their four rounds. And the great thing about this viz is if you use the viz in tooltips, um, this pops up and you get some great additional analysis as part of the viz. So well worth checking out. End of uh, May, so the, the Champions League final. So Spencer provided a, a wonderful data set on the Champions League. And this one by Neil Richards, who's, who's had a few shout outs actually. <laughs> Uh, but this one was fantastic. It looked at uh, the cycles of success, so the periods of dominance of each country. And then moving on to June, who could forget the World Cup? So England did go out one round too early, um, if you ask me. Um, but actually, uh, Rodrigo Coloni did this um, Sankey diagram. So I don't know if Rodrigo's in the um, house today, but if he was, I'd probably mention the Neymar roles a couple of times and how he dived all over the place in the World Cup. But actually, Rodrigo looked at the top 10 FIFA World Cup goal scorers uh, by nation and used the Sankey diagram to look at that relationship. Into July, we looked at uh, some tennis data. And another member of the audience, uh, Harper, who's already had a call out on the big stage, gets a, a call out on the little stage here uh, to do this amazing square bracket design, uh, which was incredibly appealing, uh, and looked at uh, the different uh, the winners across Wimbledon. And then moving on to our most recent challenge, or one of our most recent challenges, in August, Spencer shared a data set about European football leagues. Um, and Dorian Bantuo looked at Borussia Dortmund's recent performance. And the reason we absolutely love this is there was only three colours in the data viz, um, but they are three colours that are associated with Borussia Dortmund. And it makes it really easy to make the data pop. So you can see exactly the years when Jurgen Klopp was in charge um, and they had their real kind of bumper um, kind of success under Jurgen Klopp, just as Liverpool are now experiencing as well. Our most recent one uh, focused on the Ryder Cup, so we won't dwell on this too long given where we are. Uh, but uh, Brian Troy looked at, he, he did this curvy timeline that uh, varied depending on whether it came back to uh, Europe or whether it stayed in the US. So he'll have added a, a nice down one in the most recent one. And we've also been fortunate enough to have some great guest hosts. So if you are in the room today, thank you very much for the support that you've given us. But actually, we asked members of the Tableau community to actually participate and choose the data set and publish it and help us run it every month. So I know, Neil, you've done a guest data set. Uh, Lorna Eden is doing it currently. Um, but actually, if you do want to participate, let us know because we are desperate for you to actually help us run it in the next couple of years. Um, to suggest data sets yourself. Um, so moving on quickly, uh, we also get Tableau public recognition. So we've been fortunate enough to have six viz of the days and two viz of the weeks from people that have actually submitted visits as part of Sports Viz Sunday. So here Klaus Schultz looks at the Winter Olympic Games um, and this was our first ever viz of the day as part of Sports Viz Sunday. But I think we'll visit through these because uh, we timed this yesterday and it's already over time. So. Uh, this one was by Simon for our Winter Olympics challenge, uh, very exciting. And moving back to Klaus, this looks at alpine skiing um, and the thing we love about this, it actually kind of mimics the alpine skiing by using joy plots that go on one side and the next. Another one of Simon's, this one was uh, our first viz of the week uh, and he, he's used that, uh, that green colour that I think makes it look like the grass which is, is beautiful. And then last shout out for Neil, um, but Neil got viz of the day for this uh, curling viz so not the most exciting of sports, maybe, but certainly one of the most exciting data visits. Uh, when, again, you look at how Neil did it to be able to look at that and associate it with the sport. 
This one by Steve Fenn uh, for one of our recent challenges on the, on football. This one got Biz of the Week as well. Uh, and you, when you hover over this, you can actually see the pattern per team of, uh, of how they've performed over the last 20 or so years. And it might be a bit of an English reference, but um, if those of you that know Ian Dowie, um, Ian's um, synonymous with making up words. So we're not quite sure bounce back ability is a word, um, but this is by Jamie Smith. Um, used Ken Fla Large um, as inspiration to look at how long people went between wins in last season's Premier League. Same data set. Uh, this one was by Rob Radburn, and I don't know whether he's taken any inspiration from Junior Radburn, but uh, he's got some strange little colourings in that represent different things, but uh, it helps you pick out the pattern really easily. So last couple of minutes, um, just to say how can you now participate? So we'd really love you to be able to participate by tweeting the hashtag Sports Fizz Sunday. So if you do a Sports Fizz, feel free to use the hashtag and we'll try and help you promote the Fizz. If you see some inspirational Fizzes out there for sports, please tweet it. Um, but also we'd like to really make a plea. We've only been able to include about two or three Fizzes by women today. Um, and Women are such a large part of the data viz community, but they're such a small part of the sports data viz community. Um, and we really want to help you kind of raise your voice and great, the great work that you're doing out there. So Lorna is currently our guest host for October, but please, please, if you are passionate about sports, um, reach out to us and we'd love to help showcase your work. You can also participate in our monthly challenge. So we've already been through some of the ones that uh, that have, been, have really caught our eye in the last nine months, but uh, we're going to keep those going and, and look at different sports as we go forward. And if you would like to volunteer, please let us know, and you're more than welcome to be one of our future guest hosts. We've already got a couple of great guest hosts lined up for next year, but we have got quite a few spaces. So if you were interested, just reach out to us, and we'd happily have you involve you next year. And finally, we've got a, a couple of pretty exciting announcements uh, from the three of us. We now have a Sports Biz Sunday website, uh, and there's a couple of things that we've put onto here. Uh, we've, we've started creating this sports data repository, so uh, at the moment it's got sports data sets that we've used, we've used in the monthly challenges, or that we've used uh, ourselves for data, but uh, we'd really like this to be kind of the, the place to go to for, for useful sports data. So. Uh, we've had a little link there at the top where you can get in touch and if you are using an interesting sports data set then we will take that and we will put it on our website so that it becomes a portal for people to, to take sports data and, and do their own learning and practice with their own sports. And we've also got every single one that, uh, every single effort that has been published onto data.world. So if you're seeking inspiration and you don't want to scroll through lots of things on Twitter or Tableau Public then we've got pictures of every single one that's been submitted for different sports. And our last, an Sorry, our last announcement today um, is that in December, thanks to Jordan Scott at Tableau, we'll be hosting our first ever Sports Data Viz user group. So it'll be a virtual user group on a Sunday, just to keep in with the theme of Sports Viz Sunday. It'll be an hour, once a quarter, and we'll be asking guest hosts to come and showcase sports data and use that as an opportunity for you all to get involved in the discussion. And if you wanted to present something, that you are passionate about, let us know and we'll try and involve you in that over the next 12 months or so. But keep eyes out for that. Registration will probably be available in the next couple of weeks and it will be on a Sunday in December for about an hour. So I just wanted to end this on behalf of all three of us by saying thank you. <laughs> thank you for attending. Thank you for making the sports community what it is. And thank you for participating in Sports Fit Sunday over the last 12 months and helping us grow it from nothing to what it is today. Um, and I couldn't resist it, I'm sorry, but I just had to do a little bit of gloating about the Ryder Cup. Um, so sorry, Spencer, but my fault. Lovely. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Thank you for coming in. Um, feel free to come and contact us. We will be wearing these for the rest of the day, so we'll stand out. But uh, thanks for getting involved. Yes, thanks, everyone. <laughs>